Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's feeling well, no one's sick, and I want to welcome you this morning to our Sunday School lesson. And you know when we have our Sunday School lesson, I need for you to have three things with you, and I'm sure you remember. One was a pencil with a sharp, sharp point so you can write on it. Two, a piece of paper that we can use for our prayer card, our prayer card. And we'll say a prayer for someone here in a moment. And then most importantly, most importantly, you need to have your Bibles because this is where all the truths are and where all the promises are from God. And that's what we're studying. We're studying about those promises. And today what we're going to learn about is in those promises that we're fighting the fight of faith. Fighting the fight of of faith. Wow, that's a pretty big thing. And we're going to learn some things in this battle, this fight that we have. And it's a spiritual battle. And here's the main lessons that we're really going to look at today. Here's the main lessons. Number one, that we really are in a spiritual battle. And Satan, he fights against the faith of all of us believers. And he tries to get us discouraged. He tries to make us feel sad and that we won't trust in believing in these promises of God. And then third, the battle for faith. God provides us special armor we're going to learn about. Special armor, special weapons to fight this spiritual fight. We're going to be in for some real important things that we're going to learn today and how Satan tries to attack us and the weapons and the tools that God gives us, the promises that are all located in the Bible. So we're going to be studying this. But before we do that, let's take a moment and pray and make sure you, if you don't have them already, go get your Bible and a pencil and a piece of paper and we'll come back together for our prayer time. Go ahead. I'll wait. It's prayer time. And remember what we always do with our prayer time. I need for you to write on the top of your piece of paper, prayer card. Prayer card. P-R-A-Y-E-R -E card. C-A-R-D. And remember, what we always want to do is to Try to remember who, who do you want to pray for today? Well, write it down. Write it down. I'll wait. And next, what do you want to pray for? There's a lot of ideas that you want to pray for, for good health, to be safe, that you won't be sad, that some people can get well. Write it down. Again, write down who you want to pray for and why or what you want to pray to God about. Have you written those down? Good. What I'd like you to do is to share it with the person you're with. Talk it over with the person you're with. Why do you want to pray for that person? Go ahead. I'll wait. Okay, let's pray together before we begin. Dear Heavenly Father, you know all these things that weigh on our hearts. You know when we're happy. You know when we're sad. But now, God, we ask you to help these folks who we have written down on this piece of paper. Help them, Lord. And you know what they need. We ask you to, to be with them now, strengthen their faith. We ask you to be with our mommies and daddies and all our teachers and our classmates. 
and all our friends at school and at church. Keep us safe. This we ask in Jesus' name. Thank you. Now let's begin our lesson. Well, thank you for praying. I think it's also important now that we take roll call to make sure everyone's here. So let's see. Haddon, are you here? Good morning, Isabel Barrios. I know you're here. Josie, Adrian, Daniel, Levi Smoker, Benjamin Cribbs, are you over there? Asher Wurr, are you back there? Okay, Isaac Humbert, good morning. And Noel McKelvey. I hope you're all here. Well, as I said, we're going to learn today about our whole lesson is fighting the fight of faith. So the question really is, what type of battles are we in? Are we in these type of battles? Are we in these type of battles where we use spears and clubs and we march into battle? Is that the type of battle are we in? I don't think so. No, no, I don't think that's the type of battle. Even though there's battles like that that people fight, what the Bible and God's telling us is that we really are in a spiritual warfare. It works like this, that Satan, the devil, he attacks our minds and he attacks the way we think and the way we feel and then the way we act. It's really a spiritual battle. Wow, that's, that's really hard to, to understand sometimes, not only for little boys and girls, but even for big mommies and daddies, that it's a spiritual war. As I said, Satan, what he does is he, he attacks our our feelings and our emotions. That's what he does. And it's just like this picture here. It's like playing chess with our lives. And we're really playing against the Satan and the devil. And, and we're playing for our souls. And God wants to rescue us and save us. Because Satan, what he really does is he tells us things that are not true. He tells us lies. He creates doubt, worry, fear. Yeah. Do you have doubts? Do you worry about things? Take a moment and talk it over with your mommy or daddy, whoever's with you. What are you really afraid of? We're all afraid of something sometimes. Go ahead, tell your mom and dad what you are afraid of. Yeah, okay. But you know what's really good? What's really great, what's really great is the Bible. The Bible tells us something that's really, really important. That our faith, and we got to remember this, that our faith, our faith is not based on a feeling, but a truth. And that's God's truth. God's truth. God's truth defeats the enemies who are fighting for our soul. And it tells us that the word of God, the word of God, is a powerful weapon against the lives of Satan that tries to attack our emotions and our feelings. And we're going to learn today that the Lord gives us the Holy Spirit and he helps us fight, helps us fight our fears so we don't fight these battles alone. And that's what we're going to find out today and how the people in the Bible in the Old Testament time try to remember. And what the Apostle tells us, the Apostle Paul today tells us what these weapons are that we have. And how we can fight 
the spiritual warfare. Now, during the Old Testament times, God provided his people many different ways to remember how he helped the people defeat evil in their battles as they went into the promised land and they left Egypt and the Pharaoh. One of the ways they did it was with a, by a person by the name of Asap. Asap. Here's a picture of Asap. Here's a picture of Asap. And we find all about him in a, a book in the Old Testament in 1 Chronicles chapter 6. In chapter 6 of Chronicles, around verse 31, we find out he was one of King David's chief musicians. Yeah, he was also a direct ancestor of people God told to be in charge of all the music in the Lord's temple. And they would sing in front of the tabernacle where God resided with his people. Yeah, he was the chief musician. Now, back in those days, they had all kinds of different instruments that they played. Here is a picture of some of the musical instruments that they played in those days. Can you name any of these? You don't see many of these around today. There's an azor, which is a no string instrument, a psalter, a lyre, a harp. Do you know what a sofar is? That's like a ram's horn, a trumpet. There's the trimbel, which is like our modern day tambourine. There was a flute, there was cymbals, and there was a tope, which is really what we would say our drum. And then you can see all the people in the court. Here's all the magician, musicians that would play all the different types of instruments. All these different types of instruments they would play. And God told them, King David, when he built the temple, to make sure that they had this type of music and instruments where they could worship in front of his tabernacle. We also know that Aesop, this chief mus musician, he wrote some of the Psalms that's in the Bible in the Old Testament. And the people would sing and they would he would write songs songs that the people would sing so they could remember and when they worshiped in front of the temple. We're going to look at one of the Psalms that he wrote. Turn in your Bible to Psalm 77. Psalm 77 in your Bible. And again, as I said, in Old Testament times, the people as part of their temple worship, they would sing. They would sing. And Aesop wrote, as I said, many of the Psalms. If you look in your Bible, you'll find that he wrote Psalm 50 and also Psalm 73 to 83. But we're looking at Psalm 77. And look at the first four verses. He says, I cry aloud to God and he will hear me and he will hear me. In the day of trouble, I seek the Lord. My soul refuses to be comforted. When I remember God, I moan. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I cannot speak. How do you think, how do you think Asa feels? Do you feel sad? Do you feel he feels troubled? Yeah, I think so. And I think he is telling his people, we all feel like this, but we have to remember because God's blessed us. He has shown us many, many miracles and we shouldn't have doubts and we shouldn't have fears. 
these feelings that we have. We just need to listen and not give in to Satan. So he tries to help his people. And look at verse 11. Verse 11. And in verse 11, he tells that maybe one of the greatest miracles that he wants the people never to forget. In verse 11, look at the words. It says, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. And maybe the greatest miracle that was over nature and man was when he, God, not Moses, God parted the Red Sea and help all of the people leave Egypt. So Asaph's telling the people, we must remember. We can't forget. In verse 13, it says, God, your way is holy. What God is great like God? You're the God who works wonders. You're the God who works miracles. And the people would sing these songs so they would remember the promises of God. And we have to remember those miracles in our own lives. And now we're going to look at what the Apostle Paul tells us that we have to remember also for these battles, these spiritual battles that we're in. So let's look in the New Testament, and we're going to look at the book of Ephesians. Ephesians. Find Ephesians in your Bible. It's in the New Testament. Okay, have you found Ephesians? Again, we want to look at chapter 6 of Ephesians. Chapter 6 of Ephesians. And look at verse 10 and 11 before we start. Verses 10 and 11. And this is part of a very important memory verse. Because look at verse 10 and 11. Chapter 6. Chapter 6. Our memory verse. It says, Finally... Paul's telling us, be strong in the Lord and in his strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes. Schemes, another word of that would be tricks. Tricks. The tricks of Satan. Tricks of the devil. And what did we say those tricks were? Those were lies or not truths. Yeah. So today, Jesus has come, and Paul's telling us here in Ephesians that we have special tools to help strengthen us for these spiritual battles against Satan. And he tells us to put on some of the armor? No. What's he tell us? He tells us to put on the whole armor of God. And what does armor do anyway if you're in a battle? What's it do for a soldier? That's right, it protects them. And if you don't have it all over, if you get hit in certain areas, you can get really hurt and sometimes die. So God wants us to put on all the armor so we can protect ourselves in these spiritual battles. Let's look at what God tells us are five important pieces of armor. Five. Can you see those in your Bible? It starts in verse 10. It starts in verse 10. Look, it's sort of like this. God tells us to put on the whole armor of God. Look at the first thing in verse 14. He tells us to put on the belt of truth. Truth is keeps us from giving in to the world's beliefs. Our beliefs and actions need to be based on the truth of God and his word. Look at also in verse 14. He tells us to put on the breastplate of righteousness. What's righteousness mean? Righteousness means we need want to be honest. Honest, good, humble, and fair to others. It means standing up at times for people who are weaker. Look at verse 15. He tells us to put on what? He tells us to put on 
He tells us to put at, to have our feet prepared with the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. The gospel of peace is being right with God and being connected and centered, especially in troubled times. Jesus said, peacemakers will be blessed. What's another one? Look at a fourth one in verse 17. It's the helmet, a helmet of salvation. Look at verse 17. He says to put on the helmet of salvation. What does that mean? That means by believing that Jesus Christ died for our sins and he rose again. And he rose again. That's what's important. Another one is the shield of faith in 16. Faith is being sure that God will keep his promises. Faith in God protects you when you are tempted by doubt. The shield of faith. The helmet of salvation. And finally, the fifth one, verse 17, is the sword of the sword of the Spirit. And the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. That's the Word of God. God, The Word of God is our offensive weapon. The Holy Spirit will help us and it helps people see that their bad thoughts and their bad actions are wrong. And they want to be forgiven. Yeah. God has also given us many other people, other Christians. Mommies and daddies, aunts and uncles, our Sunday school teachers, sometimes our other Christian friends to help us in these battles, these spiritual battles. Everybody always trying, just like Aesop, and as Paul's trying to do is tell us to remember, to remember all these promises of God and don't forget them. We can't just let our fears and doubt and things that we worry about. Soldiers, good soldiers, don't sit and wait. They become aggressive. They study the Bible. They learn these promises of God. And they never, never forget. We have to remember both the Bible, the promises there, and the miracles in our own life. And remember, God is mighty. And God does not lose battles. No, he doesn't. So we need to run to him in times of battles. Hey, you know what? I think I have, I see two young, two young people prepared for the battles of life. Look, here they come. Here they come. There's two knights. Bell the truth. Breastplate of righteousness. The shield of faith. The helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Go, Go knights! I have one other special thing for you. And I know many of you really like to do puzzles. So I made a puzzle for you. A puzzle. And I hope you can enjoy it. Now this is pretty difficult. It's going to take you a little bit of time to try to get this done. But there are 13... 13 words here that we just learned. These are all the words that's in this puzzle. 13. And I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. On the very last line, bottom line, bottom line, bottom line, is the helmet of salvation. Do you see it? The helmet of salvation. It's across the whole bottom. So that's, now you only need to find 12 more. So good luck, good luck, and I hope you have a good week. Bye now.